Law enforcement officers often find some crazy things throughout their careers. Oh, she's down. Ranging from strange to highly illegal. Come on up. Here are some of the most insane discoveries ever made in law enforcement. Who pulled over that uh that gray Hyundai SUV? You see it? You know what I'm talking about? It's back then. I see you pulling there. It's back then right here. Yeah. Right here, yeah. Who pulled up in that? How long have been there? They just came now. They just came? They knew they were coming. But they're coming from back there. They were coming this way, you coming this way. I guess they see you, they're back. They're back there. Yeah. On March 20th, 2023, Chambly police officer located a stolen rental car in the parking lot of the Quality Inn Hotel in Atlanta, Georgia. They asked the front desk who it belonged to, but as you've just heard, the worker wasn't able to give an immediate identification. Luckily, there was surveillance footage. Did they come check a room out? No, they didn't. She had an all black, the lady? Yes. That's her. Skinny tall lady. Yeah, black yeah. shirt, black, yeah. That's, that's, that's her. Okay. If you look at her, maybe she's coming to me here. Yeah, that's her. Yeah, they are in 143. Okay. The worker was able to give the officer their room number, 143. Normally, information about where someone is staying in a hotel is privileged and doesn't have to be given away. When it pertains to a crime, however, like this stolen car, it becomes a matter for the police to take care of. Hey, yo, what's, uh, we got, I got the occupants of the vehicles in room 143. It's a Santa Fe stolen vehicle, yeah. Shannon PD. You good? Just put on the shirt. What's going on with this car right here? You don't know? You in here by yourself? You sure? Yeah. The woman lies and claims to be by herself when she was already seen on surveillance footage coming into the hotel with a man. She also answers the door topless when she has ample time to put on a shirt, which shows that she's probably quite nervous. Did you come here by yourself? Yeah. You sure? What a guy in the orange pants. Um, That's who's in the car with you, right? No? Yeah, I'm, I'm by myself. Okay. Where you get this car from? I'm not in the car. I don't, I don't have a license. You don't have a license? Yeah, I don't, I don't drive. Okay. So how'd you get here? Okay. Huh? Yeah, everything good. Are you sure you're the only one in this room? Yeah, I'm positive. So I go in the back and ain't nobody else in the room? Yeah, I'm positive. Okay. okay. What's your name? I'm Tiffany. Tiffany who? Tiffany Stone. Nice to meet you. Okay. Go ahead and put your shirt on. You good. Where's the keys at to this vehicle right here? There's not the keys right there on the bed? I don't you don't think so? No, that's not the keys. She's taking a pretty confident approach in straight up lying to the police officer's face, especially with car keys sitting directly in his view. She's also taking a strangely long time to put her shirt back on. So I'm gonna step back here. There's nobody else in the room, you said? You sure? Stay right here with this officer. Come on out, bro. Come on out. Turn around. Turn around. What I do, sir? You can do nothing. Who else back there? Nobody else back there. Man, my baby mama did all this about the car, man. She, that's her. That's okay, okay, we're good. We're going to ask questions later, all right? We're just going to detain you and see what's going on. Go ahead and detain her. She, man, my baby mama. Have a seat. Mama, um, Have a seat. Man, gave me the car and now she done. Sure. She, I've been with you, so now she don't report the car stolen, I guess. It's crazy, bro. The man came out and immediately started blaming the girl for all of this, right after she'd been defending him and saying there wasn't anyone in the room. Shows very well where their loyalties lie. So apparently it's a rental car. You got your ID on you? I don't have my ID on me. What's your name? I'm at DeMarlo. DeMarlo? Yes. All right, we're gonna get to the bottom of it. Like I said, you're not arrested right now, you're just being detained. So you tell us and explain us what's going on with this vehicle because it's reported stolen. Yeah, my, my baby mama, uh, my baby mama's vehicle. She gave it to me. I came to chill with her. Now she gonna report the car stolen. That's, that's not, it's not yeah. stolen. At the moment, it seems like the man is going to run with the story that he had no idea that the car was stolen. 
and thought that his baby mama owned it. At this time, we don't know whether or not that's the case, but we'll find out pretty readily in the next couple of minutes. I mean, it's okay because my baby mama gave us this car to drive. Mm -hmm. It's not stolen. Okay. On everything. It's not stolen. We haven't did nothing. I just fell asleep. She was caught on my phone. I fell asleep. You see, I was in here. So she gave that she borrowed the car? Yes. Okay. My phone went there. She was I know she's been calling my phone. When did you get the car from her? It's like, oh, we've been we together. Me and my baby mama is together. Okay, so who is this female to you? She's just one of my friends. Side chick. Yes. Okay. So you think that's why your baby mama reported the vehicle stolen? Exactly. So go ahead and break it down with the vehicle again though. She said so um, the car is in her name. Yeah, the car she rented the car. Actually she rented the car from me. Mm -hmm. but we been we been going out of time and helping her move. I just helped her move back to Georgia. Right. Paid for her to move to Georgia. So they would have an opportunity to go through Well, the car is in her name, but she she gave me the key. I didn't never take nothing from her. I on this on my son, so everything I love, she gave me the key. Never took it. She got mad so I got messages in my phone. I got the messages in my phone saying that she mad. Just because, like, I do whatever for you. She said, I do whatever for you. I just want to be with you. Please don't leave me. Please don't do this for us. Please don't, like, just chill. I tell her, just chill. You just, you know what I'm saying? Like, just because you done did me wrong, now now you want to do me wrong some more? Right. I, like, I didn't steal that car. I did. I didn't steal none of her stuff. This is a stolen rental car. That much was already established by the police but he seems to be claiming that someone reported the car as stolen as a sort of revenge against him for sleeping with somebody else? And the rest of his storytelling seems to be rather erratic. You got warrants out of three different agencies. You know, Rockdale, DeKalb, a couple other warrants. Yeah. So we gotta see if they gonna even approve it, okay? Gonna approve it. That's, that's a gun? That's, uh, no, that ain't mine. It's not yours? No. A Taurus G3, serial number is Before I got another firearm, 69. Yeah, this this one was in the draw. So I'm trying to find a serial. Like he scraped that shit off. I like just shaved that shit off. You can see it but barely. That shit is stolen, bro. But you gotta you gotta see these guns though. That ain't my gun. That might not my gun. So who guns are they? Gun was not in my possession. I don't know. It's that's in not, your room. That's not my gun. But somebody. I didn't even know, didn't even know much about that gun. This gun's wrapped in your shirt. That's 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 my baby mom's gun. She okay. Okay, but this gun, you don't know who gun is it? I don't it? know who gun it is. I, I don't. All right, yeah, it's confirmed. Confirm. Uh. Scraping the serial number off of a gun is a fairly common move by career criminals. It's so that its origins can't be traced back to the original owner. What's your name? I'm Tiffany. Tiffany? Okay. Who rented the room out? Well, I, I had rented the room today. Uh huh. But I had this idea. Thank you. So you, I just found it. So you use somebody else's ID? Yeah, that's okay. That's bad, right? Yeah, I'm gonna read your Miranda warning. Just, just cover you, okay? Do you wish to talk to me? Yes. Okay. Just one question. Okay. One question, a couple of questions. I'm very cold and I really have to pee. Okay, that's fine. So, what's going on with the uh with the room? Why would you rent rent the room out of somebody else's name? I know that wasn't a good. <clears throat> Because they, they, they describe you coming in there to rent out the room. You know that person? I found the ID. So where you find the ID at? It was like literally on the ground somewhere. Oh, okay. What, how did you pay for the room? I paid with money. With money? Cash money. You know I can go ask them, right? Yeah. Who card? Did you use somebody else's card? Mm -hmm. You sure? Yeah, I don't have anybody's card but except my cash app card. So you didn't use nobody else's card? Yeah, okay. A lot of hotels and motels won't allow you to rent a room with only cash because it leaves them very open to damages. If they have a card on file, if they go to clean up the room and find that it's been destroyed, they can charge the damages. If they took cash, they're generally out of luck. So what's the deal with the car? Oh, see, and, Tip. and the thing with the car, I don't know anything about What's your that? last name? So you say you don't know about the car? I don't know anything about the car. When did you meet up with him? I just got with him yesterday. Yesterday? How long you know him? It's not a wise eye at the end. Can I get a cover, please? How long you know him? Not long. Not long? What's not long? Like a few weeks. A few weeks? Definitely. Okay. So when did he come get you in the car? Uh, this was yesterday. 
Yes, sir. Like, okay. Last um, night. Where did he pick you up from? Um, I was over at a gas station. Gas station? Okay. Their stories don't line up in the slightest. Both of them seem to be looking to turn the other into a scapegoat, which says a lot about their relationship. It also shows that neither of their stories can really be trusted, and the officer is going to have to do some sleuthing to figure out the real story. Alright, I'm going to read your Miranda real quick, okay? Okay, sir. Do you wish to talk to me? Yeah. Okay. Talk to her. She does know that you had those two guns in your possession last those night when you got them. Those two guns were in my possession? I don't even got no, like, my, my, I don't even have a gun. It's my baby mama gun. Okay. Both of them? Um, nah, just that one big, that one big gun she got. That's mm -hmm. all she got. So what the other one, black gun, the chrome, the stainless know, steel on top of I don't of. know where that gun came from. It's just sitting in the room. I don't, I didn't even know that gun was in there. You didn't know the gun was in there? No. Okay. Yeah, she got a whole, they got checks. Bro. There's some shit. While searching the room and the car, officers found a stash of fake IDs, bank checkbooks with different names, and the aforementioned two firearms. The officers would later learn that the man was a career criminal with a very extensive record that spanned multiple years. It was an almost movie-like discovery, with all of these stereotypical things found. The suspects were arrested and transported to DeKalb County Jail. The female suspect was charged with possession of a firearm during the commission of a felony, theft by receiving stolen property, criminal use of an article with an altered ID mark, financial transaction card theft, and identity fraud using the identifying information of another. The male suspect was charged with theft by receiving stolen property, criminal trespass, theft by taking, financial transaction card theft, possession of a firearm by a convicted felon, possession of a firearm during the commission of a felony, and financial transaction card theft. Both of them will likely be serving time for a very long while. This video was shown to a jury in Wisconsin during the trial of Taylor Shabiznes, who was arrested and charged with murder. This body cam footage starts fairly tame, with two officers entering a house and talking with the two inhabitants. Unfortunately, what they found under their roof was something that no parent should ever have to even think of. This bedroom belongs to Shad Therion, the son of the mother upstairs. He had been missing for several days when the mother's boyfriend found something strange inside a bucket in their house. He tried not to let the mother look inside. Instead, he called the police right away. He said that he didn't know what it was, but he knew that it was something awful. The officers don't let their shock show very much on their faces here, but in court, they testified that it was one of the most horrifying things they'd ever seen. Within that bucket, in his room, was the decapitated head of Shad Therion. 
There was also the, quote, male organ which had been left beside it, along with two knives. The contents of the bucket cannot be shown on YouTube, and you would not want to see them even if they could be. What you should know, however, is that there was evidence of strangulation, and the state alleges that the defendant took advantage of him during rough intercourse, choking him to death with a chain before continuing with his corpse. Other body parts were later found in the basement stuffed inside of plastic shopping bags. This woman is Taylor Shabiznes, the woman who committed these atrocities. After she was arrested, she admitted to blacking out while smoking methamphetamine, and would later admit to the opportunistic killing of Therion. The two of them had been lifelong friends up until that point, though they frequently engaged in adult activities with each other. We got quite a bit of blood down here. I want to clear this rest of this house. We've got two people in the house for sure. Taylor was charged with murder in the first degree, mutilating a corpse, and sexual assault in the third degree. Before the start of the trial, Shabiznes had entered a plea of not guilty because of insanity through her attorney. But that attorney was eventually allowed to quit the case after she attacked him in the courtroom. In late 2023, she was sentenced to life in prison for her crimes. On May 5, 2023, Florida deputies were dispatched to conduct a welfare check on a woman who hadn't been seen for several days. The other side of Reek's bed. Hello? Sheriff's office. Somebody in there? Hello? Because nobody answered the door, the police decided to head over to a neighbor's house to see if anyone had talked with Lainey recently. How you doing? Hey, doing good. How are you? All right, brother. Have you seen Lainey recently? The girl? Yeah, next door neighbor. Just the guys over there. When's the last time you seen them? Him, he usually walks up and down the road, but her, I haven't seen her in a while. How long would a while be? Mm. Days, months? Day or two. Couple three. days. Three? Three? Yeah. Three three days or something like that. When's the last time you seen the boys? Yesterday. Okay, so nobody today. Mm-mm. Have you heard any, any fighting, anything in the last two days? Any it's loud commotion? Mm -mm. I know this would be not abnormal for you to hear yelling and screaming coming from over there. So. No. Nothing. No, I, We're kind of new to the neighborhood, too. So yeah, okay. There's been a lot of different things going on <laughs> here, so it's weird. <laughs> We're not used to it. <laughs> no. More more quiet. Yeah. yeah. Oh, so really? if we hear and or see yeah. anything. Just call the number right there. That's the non-emergency number. If you see Lainey or any Yeah, her boys. sister's okay. looking for and she's not able to get a hold of her, so that's why we're out trying to make contact with her. Yeah. But I can smell that smell from 
he got close to the... <laughs> He's working. Three thirty eight time. That that could be pushed in. Yeah, we're not gonna have to push this thing in the way. It ain't supposed to be pushed in. I mean, I can make an open door. <laughs> There's a door on each side of the house. And it's just like propped up, but some of the things like ready to fall down. At this point, the police were growing worried for the woman's safety for several reasons. The first was that she hadn't been seen by anyone for several days. But the most pressing issue was the smell. Both officers reported that they smelled a foul odor coming from both doors to the house. The smell alone, however, didn't give them probable cause to enter, so they are currently trying to figure out a way to legally get inside. Oh, the bench. Missouri. Nothing. The kitchen's over there. So, but I can't. Information for Laney, it's going to be an ACES and just run it real quick. Okay. Then have the central check her out in all of the hospitals to see if she's there. Because there wasn't much else for them to do at this point, the deputies decided to go out to check the local hospitals to see if Lanny had been checked into one of them. That search ended up being fruitless, however, and they came back to the house later that day. Oh, I'm just did you hear us knocking before yeah. where you knocked out? No, I was sleeping in there. I'm glad you woke up because you're about to come inside. We're looking for mom. Do you have you seen her? She's not around right now. Do you know where she's, she's at? Her sister's asking for her. She's not in any trouble or anything like that. I have no idea. When, when was the last time, time you saw her? her? Um, a few days ago. Where'd she go? She just went to the store and said she'd be back in a little while. Is it abnormal for mom to be gone for days at a time? Sometimes. Where does she usually go? Does she have a favorite place where she likes to go when she's not home? Not that I know of. Does she tell you anything out of the normal no. when she last time you saw her? No. What happened the last time you guys were together? She gave me a few cigarettes and a little bit of food and some hand soap washed my hands and told me I was going to stay back here. But you haven't seen mom since then? So, yes, sir. When's the last time you text, called her or anything like I that? I called her anything. Okay. When was the last time you saw dad? The police up until this point have listened to him speak and haven't questioned his story, but they did their homework before coming to do the wellness check. Laney, the woman in question, has a no-contact order against her son. Realistically, she wouldn't let him into the house, so the officers know that something is wrong here. They just don't know what it is yet. Would it be alright if they just went inside to make sure she's not in there? Huh? I can't tell you no. Okay. But you stay here and it's your mom's house? Let me see. we're looking for mom, so we just want to make sure mom's not stowed away in a closet or something. Dad didn't come back and retaliate for getting arrested or something like that. So. If you're not going to tell me yes or no, then we're just going to peek your head in there real quick and then we'll come back outside. 
You can lead the way if you're so pleased. Oh, I gotta lock the door. You could go in, but you could go in. Just lead us through. Yeah. Do you have a key? No. Why would you lock the door behind you? I just usually do that. So how do you get in? I don't know. How about this other little door that's over here? It's uh, it's just barricaded up. With what? Uh, garbage can and some stuff. So how do you get in the house? Why'd you lock the door? Cause I feel like you're f***ing with me. What the hell? I'm What's the deal? Trying. You understand how how this looks, right? Yes, sir. So why? So how do you get in the house since you locked the door? I'm probably sleep in the tent. Or... Are you not supposed to be in the house? Is that why you locked the door? Yes, sir. All okay. right, that's fine. We're not worried about that. We just My want to make sure. My now is finding mom. That's it. If you know you're not supposed to be here, that's on whatever. We can. Deal with that at a later point in time. I really don't care about that. Yeah. My main goal is making sure mom's okay, find mom, and do that. That's, that's what we're here for. We're not here for you because yeah. you were sleeping in the bed or whatever. Right. Okay. Jane Jessica just saying that her boyfriend had tied her up and did things to her. I think if you shimmy it into the right, we could be able to just pull it out. Right. Yeah, yeah, so he's one of the big. So push it into the right. right. Keep pushing it in. Now try to move it out, and then push it out. There you go. There we go. The officers reported that as soon as the door was removed, a wave of that foul smell hit them in the face. They figured that it could have been the trash can used to barricade the door, but they had a bad feeling about what they would find. So are you sure mom's not in there? I don't know. I just stayed in my room, stayed in my living room. We're already in, so we're going to find out. So. I understand it's right. So you're going to tell me you didn't know mom was in there? Call 400 and have come out here. Just gonna read you Miranda so you know your rights before anything happens, okay? All right. Do you swear to affirm that the statement you're about to give is the whole truth, but nothing but the truth? Yes. Sir. When we first got here and talked to you, you said you hadn't seen mom in how long? A few days. A few days. When is is that the actual actual answer or what's what is the answer you want to swear to? Did the last time you saw mom? We were talking around the house here. I mean, yeah, I seen her riding a bike and uh, she gave me a few cigarettes and stuff and told me to stop back by the house later. And I came and stopped back by the house later and we were talking and cleaning up the yard and cleaning up the house and everything. And she told me to stay inside and. That was a few days ago. But you so, said that wasn't the truth, that you weren't supposed to be staying inside. No. Yes, when we talked to you over there, you, okay. I said you're not supposed to be yes, here. That's no. so. No contact order. Okay. I believe. Do you know if it's still active or no? No, sir. Okay. I imagine it might. I don't know for sure. I figured she told me I should come and stay with her. And, but I don't know. Okay. What is there no contact order between you and mom for? You got into the dispute. Um, she said I slapped her, I punched her. So battery? Yes, sir. Okay, That's domestic it. stuff. Yes, sir. At this point, the police are trying to figure out what happened, because they did find Lainey inside the house. She was deceased, lying on her bed. Obviously, that can't be shown here on YouTube, but there didn't seem to be any violence involved in her death. The police just wanted to know how she died. And then your and mom's relationship has been good as of, as of late? Yeah. Did you notice anything different while you've been staying here? Did that not raise any alarm to you? Did you go and check? 
I did kind of look in there. I'll see that. I guess I should have. Like, I mean, I don't have a cell phone or anything. I should have gotten Okay. So you saw her in the position that she's currently in now. Yes, sir. So why did you tell us that mom wasn't there? Uh, hey. yes, mom, mom, mom. You know better than me. I wasn't the one that did it. So. Yes, sir. Cause I smelt her before you ever even came outside, and you're telling me mom's not in there, and you know damn well that she was in there. Yes, sir. And you're lying to me. So why wouldn't you just tell us the truth? We told you from the beginning we weren't there for you. We just wanted to make sure mom and mom was good. Yeah. That's all. So what prompted you to lie to us? Sorry. And you, um, when you went in there and checked on her two days ago, did you know that she was deceased? I couldn't say so. I wouldn't say no. Okay, but it's was it true. apparently yeah. obvious to you that yes, sir. somebody smelling like that wouldn't be yes, somebody sir. who wouldn't? Okay. Yes, so why didn't you call law enforcement when you found her in the east? You don't know. don't know. This man was arrested and charged, but not with murder. He was sentenced to 63 days in jail for failure to report death to the medical examiner and received time served. As of late 2023, he had not been arrested or charged with her death, despite several prior arrests for problems with drugs and violence against his mother. The autopsy report was filed as part of Discovery, but it is currently confidential, so it's impossible to find the real way that she died. Many people are very angry that he hasn't been charged with murder, though the trial is still ongoing even nearly a year later. Maybe his charges will change. If you thought that was crazy, though, then this next Discovery will shock you. Hey, I'm doing it. I'm going to take a short thing, please. We just stopped back. He's following a vehicle in front of your truck a little bit close here on the exit right there. So, let's get the driver's license. Sure. Right here, Michael. On April 17th, 2019, Stephen Mark Cox and Scott Samuel Green were traveling in a white SUV heading east on Interstate 40 in Arkansas. Green was driving and Cox was in the passenger seat. At approximately 1.25 p.m., Arkansas State Trooper Christopher Short initiated a traffic stop of their SUV because Trooper Short believed they were following a black pickup too closely. That is a very uncommon reason to pull over a car, and the traffic stop would later be challenged in court. Come back with me, have a seat real quick, and I get you out of second, okay? Yeah, just come on back with me. Can't wait for me there. I have a pocket knife. It's in my inside right here. Okay, just, that's what I meant, that's fine. Yeah, you just have a seat in the front seat there. So, just, uh, you just fly back, it looks like. I'm assuming here. I'm, yeah, I'm flying back. Right. Okay. This conversation took place during the unintelligible part of the dash cam footage, but the officer told them that he didn't intend to issue them a ticket. He did learn that they were driving a rental car and asked for their rental paperwork. The two people in the car worked in fugitive recovery, though they didn't elaborate much on that. You ever been in trouble for anything or that's like that? Like 20 years ago, I was in trouble because um, my friend let me use a car and actually yes. I got joyriding. That was like 20 years ago. Was it? Okay. Yeah. 17 years ago. The officer has already pulled up the entire criminal history of the man next to him and notices that he doesn't mention anything about the drug charges on his record. That, of course, is a bit of a red flag. So you don't have no weapons up or nothing like that? No, I'm really not. nervous. No, I'm not nervous at all. He really. is. He's real. I'm nervous, nervous because when I'm driving these people out here, man, they drive like nuts, Crazy, like. cutting people off, these trucks yeah. off, ramming you to the side. Uh, man, I'm looking at my hands, man, just from the air conditioner and like, yeah. like all bloodshot, like just, ah. Uh, no drug. No, no. no, no. You say, okay, I'll search car real quick, make sure you're... Well, I don't care, no. I'll right. uh, well, have you guys jump out and stand up in front of your vehicle there. I'll get you out here shortly. Yeah. Uh, I'll just put you guys right in front up there. Yeah, y'all yeah, just, uh, he's gonna search you guys' vehicle real quick. And I'll get you guys out here just a second, okay? Yeah, y'all can just hang around up there if you want. Oh, yeah. yeah. No, no way for man that like yeah. no. hey, I'll, I'll explain everything here just to get it. What all's going on, so. This is an interesting conundrum. The officer had no reason to want to search this car, and at the same time, these two men had absolutely no reason to let the officer search the car. Doing so does nothing but harm them. They weren't even being issued a ticket, and they could have been on their way. Instead, they said yes to a voluntary search. Thank you. 
The officer immediately jumped to arresting because he found something fairly insane tucked away inside their car. A whopping 37 pounds of cocaine. Both arrestees ultimately pleaded guilty. On May 14, 2020, Stephen Mark Cox of Beverly Hills, California, was sentenced to 120 months in federal prison, followed by five years of supervised release on one count of possession with intent to distribute more than five kilograms of cocaine. Scott Samuel Green, age 40, of Los Angeles, California, was sentenced on May 20, 2020, to 46 months in federal prison, followed by three years of supervised release on one count of conspiracy to possess with intent to distribute cocaine. This next one, however, has something very disturbing found by the officers. Is Amberly here? She passed away. What? What? What you just saw is something incredibly rare. A man straight up admitting to murder on body cam footage. It happened just 20 minutes south of Cincinnati, Kentucky on December 15th, 2022. Officers responded to a wellness check on Amberly Harris by her employer, who reported that she hadn't been seen in days. Tommy Powell, her boyfriend at the time, answered the door and, well, you heard him. So you're gonna put your hand right back. Where is she? Watch inside, Brady. In the back. What? The defendant's police, make yourself known! Oh, she's down. What? I got she's down. The first responders found Harris's body face down on the floor of a bedroom. We can't, of course, show you a dead body on YouTube, but just know that it's a pretty gruesome sight. Powell had evidently been living with her decomposing body for several days. When? When did you do this? No one else is in here. No, keep them coming. Also, fire on the ground. Yeah, just stay here. You got good? Yeah, we're good. All right. Hold on, hold on. Please. Yes. While these officers secured the house and eventually found a gun, the others secured Powell into police custody. Okay. You're good. Do you have any weapons on you? What's your name? Tommy. Okay. Sit in your car. Yeah, we'll work that out in a second, but I gotta make sure my guy's inside her. Okay. Hold on, hold on. I'm sorry. Tommy, I'm gonna read you something real quick, okay? Miranda right. Yeah. Powell doesn't seem surprised in the slightest at being taken into custody. Alright, do you wanna tell me what happened here? We're fighting. She's trash my shit again. Okay. Right. When were you guys fighting? Sunday morning. Sunday morning. What started the fight? Oh, what was it? I'm. So, what was it? She was on my TV and stuff. Okay. And then what happened? I lost control. You what now? I lost control. Lost control. What made you lose control? I don't know. Are you okay? No. So when you say you lost control, what do you mean? Shot. What'd you shoot her with? Twenty gauge. Twenty gauge. So it was a shotgun you shot her with? All right, Tommy, you okay right now? 7.30. I'm gonna keep my eyes on you, but I'm gonna roll down this window a little bit, all right? Powell claims that he lost control because she was ruining some of his belongings. Unfortunately, that very much seems to not be the major reason why. 
because only a short while before this, he took out a $20,000 life insurance policy on her. This very much looks like it was a premeditated ploy that didn't turn out the way he expected. I'm Detective Stryan uh, with the Defense Police. This is Detective Young with Ellesmere. Okay. I don't know anything, man. I was at home, just kind of hanging out. Um, apparently, we got a call to your home. You looked up. What's going on? You shot your girlfriend? Okay. So, real quick, who who lives there? I believe it is. Who, whose name's on the lease? Mine. Your name's on the lease? Okay. okay. So, real quick, man, do you mind if we search your residence? During his trial, Powell pleaded guilty to first-degree murder and was sentenced to life in prison without the possibility of parole. Finding a dead body was a shocking discovery, especially because several of the officers were new. If that was shocking, however, you're not ready for what's up next. Hey, sir, I'm Trooper Brown, Arkansas State Police. The reason I'm stopping you, you're continuously driving in the left lane without passing. Impeding the flow. Can you drive aside from the registration? Those people behind me traveling with you? No, sir. No? Man, he's, he's been on my ass since uh, before Batesville, honestly. Okay, well, you've been Hang called out. in as a reckless driver as well. I don't know if you're aware of that. People have been saying you've been all over the road. What's going on today? In many states, officers do have the right to pull you over for remaining in the left lane without passing, though a lot of the time they don't do so. If you're doing something else wrong, however, like this man who was apparently driving recklessly, then it's another thing that they can ding you for when they give you a ticket. All right, Mr. Shamlin, I'll be right back with you, okay, sir? So, uh, this guy that's called in that was reckless, I've stopped him for impeding the flow of traffic, continuously driving in the left lane. He's got some drug history. I'm trying to look right now to see if he is a probationer or anything with a search waiver on file. If that's the case, probably go ahead and get him out, do a quick search. Might do some field sobriety just based off of the, uh, caller that I just let go. He, his statements, he was all over the road and stuff. Yep. He touched the yellow line a couple of times while I was watching him. We might do some field sobriety and maybe see if he's DWI drugs or something, but uh, let me look real quick and see if he's a probationer or anything with search waiver on file. He says he's working. He is a parolee. He does have a search waiver on file, so I would suggest getting him out and doing a quick search of the car and make sure he's okay to drive. The search waiver on file means that the officers have the right to search his car even without the typical presence of probable cause. This is generally agreed to by the defendant to get an easier sentence, or as a condition of being let out on parole. I'll tell you kind of what's going on, man. Uh, I notice you're parolee with search waiver on file, all right? You got some prior drug history. I want to make sure that you're okay to drive. You're not yeah. DWI drugs or anything like that. You have any weapons on you or anything? Uh, I noticed that knife hanging up there in that rearview mirror. I mean, there, there's a bunch of Yeah, you got some simultaneous, simultaneous possession of drugs and yeah. firearms, there's explosives no, and all that. There's, no uh, there's the first time I'm legitimately there. asking, is there grenades in your car? No, sir. No, no bazookas? Hey, no, sir. All right. And I laugh because, man, it's, it's been ongoing since I was 17. Yeah. I mean, man, I'm really explosives. Where are you dealing with? That's that back in like 2000. All it was was a blasting cap. Really? That's it. There was yeah. no explosives. I mean, I grew up in the country. Why don't you step over here for me so we ain't by the road, man. Go ahead and uh, take the pockets, pull them inside out for me, and place all that stuff on the trunk. Alright, got anything in that butt pocket? Nope. Okay, dope. Can't pull that one inside out, can't hey, No, they don't come inside out. You want to have a seat in my bumper for me? Sure. All right, we're going to go through this real quick. Right there. Uh, you can grab and put it back in your pockets. The man is remarkably cordial about the situation, which is generally a good thing when you're on parole. In that situation, you know very well that it is very easy for you to end up back in prison, even on a technicality. Anyway, I can get a light. You got a lighter in there? Yeah. We'll get that for you. The old torch lighter. Thanks, sir. Oh, blasting cap, huh? Where'd you find that at? Yeah, yeah that's, that's a legitimate thing. Okay, so I'm going to read you your Miranda rights real quick, okay? You have the right to remain silent anything, anything you say. This just shows how quickly things can turn around if you're found with drugs. One moment, the two of them were having what sounded like a pleasant conversation, and next, he was having his Miranda rights read to him. There is no legal amount of methamphetamine, 
Any amount will immediately see you arrested. What are you doing with methamphetamine in your car, man? I, I, honestly, I didn't even know the shit was Let me ask you this. Can you, would you test positive on a drug test right now for methamphetamine if I was to drug test you right now? Probably so. Yeah? Yes, sir, but that is not. So you would test positive. The man tries to claim that the meth isn't his, while in the same breath saying that he would probably test positive for meth if they were to drug test him. Those two things don't hold up against each other. Shamblin was placed under arrest for possession of a controlled substance, Schedule 1, 2, meth or cocaine, greater than 10 grams but less than 200 grams, and transferred into the custody of Central Arkansas DTF Agent Hofstad. The suspect also received citations for impeding traffic and no headlights operative in rainy conditions. It's rare for officers to find hardcore drugs like this during a routine traffic stop. If you thought this case was crazy though, you're not ready for the amount of drugs in the next one. Hey guys, I'm gonna oh, stay police. I'm doing all right. All right. Are you getting tired? No. Are you okay? I just pressed some milk right now. Who you got with you? You're just riding down the center line for a while there. I'm just checking on you. I'm seeing how you get sleepy. I'm just checking on you. Let me check your license real quick, okay? All right. You can come back here and get your license. Okay? On September 28th, 2017. Arkansas State Police Trooper Chris Goodman conducted a traffic stop in Russellville, Arkansas, when he observed a silver Hyundai Santa Fe driving on and then crossing the centerline divider of Interstate 40. Harry Berto Felix Ruiz was the front seat passenger, and having rented the car two days earlier in California, his name was on the car's rental agreement. It's difficult to hear, but this was not an illegal search of the vehicle. The man kept his driver's license in his bag, which was in the back seat of the car. Is your is your driver can you come back here? Is your driver record okay? Um, I will double check that. I'm not, I'm not who rented the car? Who rented the car? Why are you driving? Because he's got he got a little tired. He got a little tired. Where are you guys going? All the way up to New York. Who's the guy in the back? The, the guy right here. Who's that? Family member. That's all. Okay. That's family member. So what hotel are y'all staying in up there? No idea. No, no you idea. You just gonna make the arrangements? Just as I go. Okay. How long are y'all staying up there? Uh, through Monday, I believe. No weapons on here or anything? Oh, no. Okay. Uh, why don't you stand right back here? I'll let you stand here with this. He's an officer also, okay? Hey, sir. You speak English? A little bit. A little bit. I don't live on. Okay. 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 A hefty portion of the conversation next happens in Spanish. In general, the officer asks the same questions as he did to the other man, but gets conflicting answers that don't match up very well. This is a key part of why he asked them separately. He didn't want to give them the chance to work up a story in case something strange was afoot. In the future, don't, don't be the only guy without a license and be driving the car. I know, so, I know. I'm sorry. Just stand up there with him, okay? You want to stand up? Do you mind stand up there with him? The officer did receive permission to search the car and is now doing so. Unfortunately for the men driving, their hiding spot wouldn't turn out to be as good as they'd hoped. I'm gonna put you in here. No, no, no. Uh -huh. Okay. The officer did find lots of drugs tucked away inside the vehicle. There were six duct taped packages tucked away and hidden inside the vehicle's spare tire, which for some reason was the wrong size. The packages turned out to be more than 15 pounds of fentanyl, which had a street value of more than six million dollars. Okay, so he's the only one that knows that 
front seat guy, the guy that rented it. In November of 2017, Ruiz faced charges from a grand jury, accusing him of conspiring to possess fentanyl with the intent to distribute it. The narrative took an unexpected twist when in February 2018, an auto salvage company alerted law enforcement about a suspicious package discovered in a vehicle they acquired at auction from a car rental agency. Surprisingly, this vehicle turned out to be the same Hyundai Santa Fe involved in the previous traffic stop and it concealed an additional 5 kilograms of fentanyl that had eluded detection during the initial search. By April 3, 2018, a grand jury had issued a superseding indictment, elevating the quantity of fentanyl associated with the crime. Ruiz entered a guilty plea on October 10, 2019. Subsequently, on May 21, 2020, United States Chief District Court Judge D. Price Marshall Jr. handed down a sentence of 11 years in prison for Ruiz, coupled with a five-year term of supervised release. Notably, the federal system does not include provisions for parole. This case was insane, and getting the drugs off the street likely saved countless lives. Law enforcement officers take a risk of finding insane things every day on their job. And these were just some of the most insane discoveries ever made by officers.